In the combustion group, we work on a variety of energy and chemical processes. In the energy context, we're looking in particular at carbon capture and storage, which many climate models suggest is going to be essential if we want to reduce carbon dioxide emissions sufficiently in the, in the atmosphere. And then also now increasingly looking at not just the combustion of fossil fuels, but the combustion of biomass. One particular technology that we're working on is known as chemical looping combustion. And this process enables carbon dioxide emissions to be captured more efficiently than with existing techniques. And we've done some modeling of this process within the context of the UK's electricity system and shown that it actually has significant economic and operational potential for generating electricity. The reactor technology that's essential for chemical looping combustion are known as fluidized beds and the group has done a lot of work to understand how these reactors behave and also what parameters govern their performance. Fluidization is the phenomenon where a fluid is passed through a bed of granules, uh, in this case sand and air. And once the air reaches a, a critical velocity, the sand granules start to become suspended in the air and the whole behaves as a liquid. If we increase the air velocity further, we can see large bubbles start to pass up through the bed of sand and this gives very good mixing. A fluidized bed provides a good environment for uh, combusting uh, fuels such as biomass um, due to these good mixing characteristics. The group has used a variety of techniques in order to investigate uh, the flow behavior, including MRI, electrocapacitance tomography, as experimental techniques to validate uh, theoretical models. And from this we can learn more about the various uh, mechanisms that drive this behavior. At the heart of chemical looping is the need to find durable, stable and reactive uh, oxides. Uh, this is a non-trivial task uh, and we have spent uh, a substantial number of years uh, finding functional oxides. One of the applications we're extremely excited about is whether we can apply these oxides outside the combustion area uh, to the production of uh, oxygenated organics. Uh, one of the areas that we're applying this to is the production of ethylene oxide, a key intermediate in the production of polymers uh, and in making things like antifreeze. In our process, um, ethylene is passed through basically a packed bed uh, of metal oxide on which silver is mounted. So the silver acts as a catalyst, but the oxygen for the oxidation is obtained from the oxide itself. The oxide uh, conducts ionic oxygen uh, which is presented on the surface of the catalyst uh, and reacts with the ethylene uh, to produce ethylene oxide. The advantage of this uh, is that oxygen in its gaseous form never comes into contact with ethylene and therefore any risk of explosion is severely reduced. This sort of approach to oxidations could have a, a major impact uh, on the way these selective oxidations are done uh, in the future. And the group works on a, a range of really important topics ranging from carbon capture and storage right through to the selective oxidation uh, of organic chemicals. And we go from the, in a sense, the, the, the very small scale, in fact, almost to the system scale, uh, really looking at, say, how a chemical looping process uh, sits uh, within uh, a power system.